and as you prepare yourself to travel to Dallas, how would you advise the Black Lives Matter activists to approach this very sensitive issue, situation? With respect to your second question, um, w one of the great things about America is that individual citizens and groups of citizens can petition their government, can protest, can uh, speak truth to power. Uh, and that is sometimes messy and controversial, but because of that ability to protest and engage in free speech, uh, America over time has gotten better. Uh, we've all benefited from that. You know, the abolition movement was contentious. The effort for women to get the right to vote was contentious and messy. Uh, there were times when activists uh, might have engaged in rhetoric that was overheated and uh, occasionally counterproductive. But the point was to raise issues uh, so that we as a society could grapple with them. Uh, the same was true with the civil rights movement and the union movement and the environmental movement and uh, the anti-war movement during Vietnam. Uh, and, and I think what you're seeing now is part of that long-standing tradition. What I would say is this, that uh, whenever those of us who are concerned about uh, fairness in the criminal justice system attack police officers, uh, you are doing a disservice to the cause. First of all, any, any, uh, any violence directed at police officers is a reprehensible crime and needs to be prosecuted. But even rhetorically, if we paint police in broad brush without recognizing that the vast majority of police officers are doing a really good job and are, are trying to protect people and do so fairly and without racial bias, if, if our rhetoric does not recognize that, then we're going to lose allies in the reform cause. Uh, now, in a movement like Black Lives Matter, there's always going to be some folks who say things that uh, are are stupid or imprudent or uh, overgeneralize or are harsh. Uh, and, and I don't think that you can hold well-meaning activists who are doing the right thing and peacefully protesting responsible for everything that is uttered at a protest site. Um, but, but I would just say to everybody who's concerned about the issue of police shootings or uh, racial bias in the criminal justice system, uh, that maintaining uh, a, a, a truthful and serious and respectful tone is going to help mobilize American society to bring about real change. And that is our ultimate objective. Now this week people felt hurt and angry. And so some of this is just venting. But I think that the overwhelming majority of people who are, are involved in the Black Lives Matter movement, what they really want to see is uh, a better relationship between the police and the community so that they can feel uh, that it's serving them. And the best way to do that is to bring allies aboard. 
And that means, that includes, by the way, police departments that are doing the right thing, like Dallas, uh, which has implemented the very reforms that Black Lives Matter is seeking. That's part of why it's so tragic that those officers were targeted uh, in Dallas, a place that is, because of its transparency and training, and openness and engagement with the community has drastically brought down the number of police shootings and uh, complaints about misconduct. The flip side of that, and this is the last point I'll make, is just as my hope would be that everybody who's involved in the Black Lives, Ma uh, Black Lives Matters movement or other uh, civil rights organizations or who are protesting uh, just as I want all of them to maintain a respectful, thoughtful tone, uh, because as a practical matter, that's what's going to get change done. I would hope that uh, police organizations uh, are also respectful of the frustrations that people in these communities feel, and, and, and not just dismiss uh, these protests and these complaints as political correctness or as uh, politics or attacks on police. There are legitimate issues that have been raised, uh, and there's data and evidence to back up the, the concerns that are being expressed by these protesters. And if police organizations and departments acknowledge that there's a problem and there's an issue, then that too is going to contribute to real solutions. And as I said yesterday, that is what's going to ultimately help make the job of being a cop a lot safer. Um, it is in the interests of police officers that their communities trust them and that the kind of rancor and suspicion that exists right now is, uh, is alleviated. So um, I, I'd like all sides to, to listen to each other. And that's what we'll hope, hopefully be able to uh, accomplish uh, over the course of the next week and over the course of uh, the remaining months that I'm present.